Welcome to a tutorial video on Twine 2.1. In this video, I'm going to cover the Settings API as part of the SugarCube 2.0. Often, it can be useful to have global values that exist as part of the Settings dialog window, where players can change them at different times. For this, we can use the Settings API. To start creating a collection of settings, we can first set the Settings add header function to set a header and a description. And in fact, that's with this little blank space is some code that's already done that. And notice we gain a settings option over here in the UI bar. So clicking on it shows us to what I set it to. So we have a header, content settings, as well as, as a description here, settings controlling what content is made available in the game. Set programmatically with code that's within this passage, and we'll look at that in a moment. To build some settings, however, we can either use settings add toggle function or settings add list function. For single options we use a toggle, this is a binary, so either true or false. Or for multiple options or list we want to use the list option. We also need to note here, to make more sense when I show it, that you, running settings save must be called to quote save the values before they will appear in the settings object to access, which will make more sense when we look at the code here. But we can see already that the value of show text is true and the value of options is option 2. That doesn't quite make sense unless we go and look at the settings. And notice there are some now. So beyond both the header, which is this, as well as the description, which was set here, we also now have some settings to set. We can change the toggle, show some text, on and off, as well as choose an option from this list, option 1 through option another here. Changing them, for example, we'll switch this to off and this to three and clicking OK. Notice it doesn't change this passage because it's already been rendered. However, if we refresh this tab, notice it changed. It disappeared now because it was false. And options is now option three. So settings are actually changed external to just the values of the variables that are saved from passage to passage and can be retained within the session of looking within the page. So when we refresh, they remain. In fact, I can show you here by turning this back on and changing to option another, clicking OK to save, and refreshing the tab, and we see it shows up again. So we have true because we use the toggle as well as the option from the list, option another. Now let's go look at that code. So starting from the start passage here, we we'll notice I'm using the setting add header function. I'm setting an initial header, content settings, which is what it was, as well as a description, which is what was here. Now going and looking at this code in action, we see, now that it's gotten confused, we look at settings, and we see, shown in the wrong order here, the heading, as well as the description that was added. And I'll in fact close this so we can build it again here in just a second. So we see content settings set as the header, as well as the description set after that. And notice I'm using this within the script macro, not just a script element within HTML, but the double less than and greater than signs for the script macro within SugarCube. And then we're running some SugarCube JavaScript. Now moving over to setting settings, we see we're using both add toggle and add list, and then settings save. So for add toggle, it is a function call with initial variable of whatever it will be called, as well as in a label. Notice we saw that when we had the option of description of what it was, and then a default value for add toggle, as well as some additional options that you can read in the documentation that comes along with SugarCube. Add list works in a similar way. So we have our label, and then instead of just a default value for the binary toggle, either true or false, we have a number of different options here we can add. I had here an array of strings with option one, option two, option three, and option another, as well as set a default value to the string option one. I also called settings save here, and the reason I did that is so we could see the values set to these show text and options immediately. Without those, we would have to open the window initially for settings to act and save those options, because every time you close settings window, it saves whatever options or whatever settings were set in those ways. So in order to see them, in this case, because they're not set with a dollar sign or an underscore, so they're not variables in the traditional sense, nor are they 
temporary variables and within twine and sugar cube, they're in fact part of the settings object. Now notice when we want to call settings API, we use uppercase setting. We want to get the values that are set using setting functionality. We use settings plural and all lowercase as well as whatever we call it. In this case, show text. And so down here, show text, options, and then options. And then as I demonstrated, they're retained within fresh, refreshing the tab until it is actually closed and it'll be reset again. And in fact, I want to demonstrate that now as I will reopen it. We see back here again, just the settings. So we have the heading as well as description as I demonstrated first. And we see true and another option because it retained them despite me closing it. And so we can go back in and look and see this is built again, off, and one, okay. But if we restart, we need to go back again. And we see this time the variables got erased. So be very careful when testing with settings and restart because restart will in fact wipe them out. However, if we reopen the window, they will get reset to their default values. We can refresh the tab to demonstrate that. Or in fact, I can set them here and close it. And they'll return again here. So be careful with that, keeping in mind that if you want to wipe out the settings value, you can restart to do that. Otherwise, they, may, they will be retained into the future within the scope of this. For example, if it moved to a different site, they would not be maintained. But here are a couple of different examples of using the settings API. Remember settings as the object, plural, is how we get those values, and setting, singular, uppercase, is how we use that functionality. Either add toggle to add a toggle option, true or false, or add list to add different options as well, as well as using saving to force it to save those values. And coming back to the start passage, using add header to add a header and a description as well. And when added, when run, as we noticed, and I will pull this back up again, it added the extra option here beyond just saves and restart as settings appeared because now there are some content in that area and we can use the settings API to access it and change different things as well. So here are ways of using the setting API. Again, the settings object plural lowercase for the values, setting singular uppercase of the use of functionality of SugarCube. Now I also want to point one thing out before I close this video. There is additional documentation because you can set additional functions using a different parameters to those functions in JavaScript. And to look at that documentation, remember of course that when we're looking at the story in the editor, we click on the story's name, click on st change story format, as well as for whatever story we have highlighted outside of just Snowman currently, we can click on the documentation and go look at it. And there is additional documentation for the settings API that I actually encourage people to go look at and review for additional new options and ways of approaching things that might be of interest for your own creations. But thanks for watching.